Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum and welcome to another lecture on tool and eye design. We are on module one and we are discussing design of fixtures and jigs. In previous series of segments, we discussed two common uh, components of both fixtures and jigs. And they are locating elements and clamping elements or devices. So all fixtures and jigs do have uh, locating elements, they are generally used as supporting elements as well, or we may have separate supporting elements. And secondly, we have some clamping methods or devices. The jigs generally have an additional component that is used to guide the tool uh, to the required position. And that is done through drill bushings. So at the end of this lecture, you should be able to understand the meaning of guiding the tool in a jig, understand general guidelines for the use of drill bushings in jigs, and differentiate between the shape and use of press fit bushings, liner or master bushings, renewable bushings, and special bushings. And finally, you should be able to understand and use ANZ standard to designate bushings. Bushings are used to guide drills, reamers, tabs, counter bores, counter sinks, and other rotating tools commonly used to make or modify a hole. So jigs are generally used on drilling press or, 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 or drilling machines. And by guiding the tool to the required position, we mean that instead of marking the point on the workpiece where a hole is to be made or modified, these bushings are installed in the body of the jig such that once a drill or other hole making or modifying tool moves through this bushing and performs the operation, that operation is performed at the required position on the part. So that is meant by the uh, guiding the cutting tools in, in the case of jigs. They are made of tool steel and are hardened to provide a wear resisting surface. So this outer surface is installed in the jig body, generally by pressing it into the jig body so it should be hard enough so that it doesn't wear out. And this inner surface or inner dia, uh, generally the drill bit passes through it or other cutting tool passes through it, so sometimes it might touch this inner dia, the tool might touch this inner surface, so uh, it should be hard enough so that it doesn't wear out. Practically, of course, the tool should not touch this inner dia, but uh, if it happens by mistake or if chips actually uh, touch this inner dia, should not wear out, so it is hardened to provide a wear resisting surface. Uh, the outside dia, this outer dia, is ground. Grinding is done this, uh, on this outer dia. And this inner dia is either ground or lapped to within 0 0.003 inch concentricity. So this inner dia must be concentric with the outer dia. And you know that concentricity is a geometric feature. So there, there is some tolerance for this concentricity. So it should be within. 0 0.003 inches uh, as, a, as a rule of thumb. The diameter of the bushing hole should be very close to the diameter of the drill, but it should not be so tight that the drill will drag in the bushing. So there is a diameter of the, of the tool. For example, uh, the drill bit, and then there is a diameter of internal diameter of the bushing. So of course, this internal diameter of the bushing should be greater than the diameter of the drill bit or the cutting tool. But this difference should not be too tight or it should not be too high. Because if uh, uh, these diameters are very close to each other, drill might drag in the bushing. So this is the jig plate, and this is the drill bushing that is installed into the jig plate. So a general rule for clearance between the drill and the bushing wall is 
from 0 0.005 to 0 0.001 inches. So as the outer die of the, of the drill or other tool makes a clearance fit with the inner die of the bushing, so we have to specify the amount of clearance. So that is between 0.005 to 0.001 inch. But this clearance should not be too great. So that may cause inaccuracy. So the hole might not be made at the required position. So this clearance should be within a certain allowed range. The length of the bushing should be approximately twice the diameter of the bushing. So this length of the bushing should be approximately twice the diameter of the bushing to provide a sufficient strength to the bushing. All bushing except renewable should have a slight interference fit into the fixture or liner that is also called master bushing. So the fit that is made by this outer diameter of the bushing with the hole in the jig plate. So this is the jig plate in which this bushing is installed. So this should be an interference fit or that is also called press fit. So once we have to uh, install the bushing into the jig plate. So we can say that this diameter in the jig plate should be slightly less than the outer diameter of the bushing. And this bushing is pressed into the body of the jig or this jig plate. There is another possibility that sometime these bushings are not directly installed uh, into the jig plate, but into another bushing that is called liner bushing or master bushing. So in that case, we do need to have slight interference so that bushing doesn't lose on out. So in that case, actually, the liner or master bushing will be making an interference fit with the jig body. And then the other bushing that is uh, the renewable bushing actually will be installed into this liner or master bushing. So we will see that in one of the following slides. A jig plate is the part of a drill jig that holds and positions the drill bushings as we saw in the previous uh, slide. The jig plate must be at least one to two times as thick as the diameter of the drill. So this is necessary to resist the cutting forces. So again, this is the jig plate and this is the drill bushing. So thickness of the jig plate should be one to two times the tool diameter. So this is the tool diameter or the diameter of the drill. So this thickness in the jig plate should be at least equal to the diameter of the drill or slightly greater than that up to two times the diameter of the drill. So again, this is the jig that we have seen repeatedly. So this is the jig plate. So in this jig plate, we have installed this bushing. So this thickness should be one to two times the tool diameter. For most application, the end of the bushing should not touch the work. A clearance of about one to two, uh, one to one and a half times the tool diameter is sufficient for the required chip clearance. So there should be some clearance between the upper part of the workpiece and lower end of the bushing. As a rule of thumb, it should be about one to one and a half times the tool diameter. However, as the accuracy of the hole in the workpiece increases, the clearance between the bushing and the work decreases. So more the accurate uh, the hole is, the lesser should be the clearance. In these cases, the bushing should be as close to the work as possible to permit the required precision. So for more accurate holes, we may reduce this clearance from one to one and a half time tool diameter to from 0.25 to half times the tool diameter. So this clearance has been reduced if the hole accuracy is increased. And that is the case for reaming operation as well. So once we are performing the drilling operation, you can see this this clearance is larger, but for the next operation that 
is performed at the same location to, to finish the hole, to modify the hole using the operation, then this clearance is uh, reduced and it is almost negligible in this case. So these were some general guidelines regarding the size of the bushings and their installation uh, in the jigs.